there was a Christian man who worked on a beach, um, feeling rejected and alone. Suddenly he looked up, and there is voice of God. Son, you have been faithful to me. I would like to grant one wish for you today. What is your wish? The man says, I always want to go to Hawaii, but I am afraid of flying. So can you build a bridge over the Pacific Ocean? God says, it's impossible. Can you think of a logistics engineering I have to do and cost and how long it's going to take? I mean, nothing is impossible with me. And a day is like a thousand days. A thousand days are like a, a day. But can you think of something else? It's impossible to do it for you today. So he says, God, I've been married four times, and all my ex-wife rejected me, saying that I am insensitive, I don't know what, how they feel, and I don't know what they think, and I just want to know everything about woman, and I want to relate to woman understand how they think and how they feel the way they feel. Can you grant that to me today so that I won't feel rejected alone anymore? God says, how many lanes do you want that over, do you want that <laughs> bridge to Hawaii? Two lanes or four lanes? <laughs> Have you ever been rejected? And alone? It, is, is there anybody never ever been rejected? Raise your hand. All right, we are in good shape. <laughs> it's a life, right? You get rejected and left alone. Rejected for your loan application, job application, job interviews. What else? Your spouses reject you sometimes. Your kids reject you, right? All so sorts of rejections we go through in life. And if we do not know how to handle rejections properly, then it's going to eat us up because it hurts, first of all. It's a painful. And so we need to know how to deal with rejections, right? Even Jesus Christ, he was powerful. He was omnipotent. He was full of love. He didn't do anything wrong. He was rejected, went through a rejection and alone. As we were read and we were studied, uh, children's message, and Bible says he was rejected at his hometown. And he showed us how to handle such a rejection. I've come up with two R's to learn from Jesus. Now, this is the beginning of his ministry. It's the beginning of the Luke chapter 4, so I want you to open all your Bibles, with a few Bibles like this. It's going to be 765, and you can look up your phones or whatsoever. I want you to read. Um, so this is a setting that Jesus, after 30 years later, he showed up at the John the Baptist, bap baptized, and then right after baptism, what happened? He was led by Satan and suffered the 40 days of what? Temptation. And then returned to Galilee, Capernaum, and he did a, a such a miracle. And his uh, fame and 
fame was going, rising up, and he returned to his hometown. And as a tradition, he stopped by synagogue, and they handed him, hand him to read the scripture. And he read this, um, let's read the verse 18, 19 together. The Spirit of the Lord All right, and he read that, I am anointed, I am here to proclaim the good news to the poor, good news to the prisoners, and recovery of uh, sight to the blind, and set everybody free. I am the one. And he says, verse 20, this is uh, the, the, the critical one. Verse 20, he says, he closed the book, and then he says, what? his interpretation of this uh, prophecy of the Messiah, and he says what? This is fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, he's saying, I am the Messiah. I am the one you were waiting for. I'm, I am the one that all your prophets uh, prophesied. No wonder they kicked him out, right? And then verse 22, they were astonished how he interpreted the scripture and they also said what? Isn't that huh? Joseph's son? Now, familiarity throw them off, right? They have forgotten about 30 years ago what happened when he was born Angels uh, showed up, and shepherds went down to Bethlehem, and prophet Micah, prophecy was fulfilled in the town of David, right? Mezai's visit, they have forgotten about that. But Jesus hasn't forgotten the reason why he came. He has uh, forgotten his call, his purpose. Why did Jesus come? To save us, right? To save the world, not to condemn the world. And he knew he will encounter some rejections. But constantly, I mean, this wasn't the first time they rejected God's own people rejected him, right? Until the end. They chose Barnabas instead of Jesus. They rejected him as uh, the Messiah, as the king of all kings. But Jesus knew what he was in for. And he never have forgotten his purpose, his call, his mission. How about us. As we live life, if when we constantly remember who we are, who we are, what we have to do, then any rejection will be what? Just goes to one ear, to out. Jesus never responded to them. Did you know that? And he says, no prophet is without honor except his hometown. No prophet is honored at his hometown. That's the same thing, right? What he was saying, I am the one. I know who I am. I know what I came to, what I need to do. Whether you reject me or not, this rejection is not all about Jesus because they didn't know him they have a lack of understanding the prophecy, and they still, a lot of Jews still, don't accept Jesus as uh, the Messiah. 
but he hasn't forgotten. You know, we often <laughs> forgetful, right? We often, we show our shoulders, oh, I forgot this, I forgot that, how many times uh, I'm looking for my phone, how many times uh, a microwave. It's a, my husband is famous for that. And he put a um, tea or water in the microwave, and the microwave is uh, done and blinking, blinking, blinking all night long. He has forgotten, and we laugh about it, but, but, but this is very important to remember our mission, remember our purpose in life. You know, th there was an a elderly uh, couple. They were experiencing forgetfulness, and they said, we got to do something about this. So they went to see their doctor, right? And their doctor says, okay, Anytime you want to do something, you jot it down, you know, before you leave. So that you remember if or when you forget what you're supposed to get it or do, to do, then you look at the memo, right? And one day they were watching TV and the wife said, oh, I have cravings for ice cream. And the husband says, sure, I'm going to go get it for you. And as he was leaving, and the wife says, doctor said, you should write it down before you do anything. Oh, I'm just going to go a few feet away, and I'm just going to grab some ice cream for you. And a few minutes later, he returned with the ham and eggs. <laughs> and the wife says, I knew you're going to forget what you're supposed to get it. Where is my bread? <laughs> you forgot my bread. Isn't that funny? You know, every Sunday after doing the benediction, what do I say? As we go forth into the world, what? Remembering, right? Remembering the lesson. Why do, do I do that? so that you can live life according to the word of God. So what, what is our bottom line? What is our bottom mission? What is our purpose? To bring glory to our God, to bring some souls to Jesus, living good life, Christian life, with the abundant life here on earth, emotionally abundant, right? So that people see, oh, I want to have what they have, right? And we forgot to remember. And then you go forth into the world, and then next Sunday you come in, and uh, Jesus made us uh, fishers of men, and you come back to Jesus and says, Jesus, I got some seaweed. And your pastor will say, where is the rice? <laughs> That's going to be a big problem, don't you think? You know, in our Bible, it depends on uh, um, translation, different versions. Um, do you, oh, how many um, remember this, remember that, remembering? How many remember is in the Word of God? Can you, help? Can you guess? Big guess. Anybody? Over 8,000. Between 8,000 to 9,000, it depends on the uh, interpretation, I mean, you know, virgins. That is how much it is important. And Jesus said, right, in the four Gospels, when he had the Last Supper, he says what? Do this in remembrance of me. That's why we do once a month communion service. So. Do this, does it mean do the rituals? Hmm? What does he mean, do this in remembrance of me? Remember to do eating the last supper? Rituals? No. Yes. Yes and no? First of all, as we do rituals, we remember. Jesus wants us to remember how we lay down our lives, 
how we love one another, how we are commissioned to go forth into the world, make disciples of all nations, bring souls to Jesus. Do this in remembrance of me. Love one another as I have loved you. I mean, when we are be able to imitate Christ-like love, oh yes, people are going to follow us. If we imitate, we can walk like Jesus. We can talk like Jesus. We can care like Jesus. We can weep like Jesus. Oh, yes. If we do not forget to do, what would Jesus want me to do every day, every day of our lives? Then there won't be any issue with the rejection because we are filled with our purpose, our call. And then there will gonna be somebody reject you, saying you are good for nothing. You remember what Jesus has done for you. I am a child of the Most High God. I am valuable. Because Christ exchanged his life for me. You see, how important it is for us to remember who we are, whose we are, and what we are to do. Then no rejection makes us get really angry, right? It's not about you. Normally, rejection is for from the person who rejects you. Like uh, Jewish people rejected Jesus because of their lack of knowledge, because of their expectations, because what they envisioned the Messiah should be, would be, look like. Amen? So what is the first R that we have to constantly do in order for us to handle rejection. Remember our call and purpose. Amen? And then second R is this. Look at verses 22 and verses 22, 23. And when they, uh, 23 and 24, when they rejected Jesus, right? And Jesus said, I know that you are going to ask me to prove myself to you, right? And what? And do the miracles that you have done in Capernaum. Do it here, right? And Jesus says what? Verse 24, let's read it. No prophet is accepted as in his hometown. Jesus simply didn't get angry at their misunderstandings or their rejections. Jesus simply said the state the truth. No prophet is honored at his hometown. In other words, He's refusing to prove himself, refusing to retaliate, refusing to put them in the place where they belong. I mean, he could have done miracles, um, called the fire down, knocked some sense out of them, but he didn't do that at all. He was rising above the situation, right? You know, there was a couple who was driving on a highway. And uh, they saw the sign, fast food, make a duchess. And uh, so husband read it out loud. The wife sitting next to him says, that's not the way pronounced. 
megadoses, right? And they had a great argument. It's like uh, me and my husband. Every time we argue about pronunciation, he wins, right? English is my second language. But the guys don't like to be corrected. So this guy was uh, furious, and he wanted to prove that he was right. So he drove into a town and parked at a fast food restaurant and walked in, dragged his wife in, and uh, the young lady behind the counter and said, he asked, lady, would you please pronounce your store name clearly, correctly, slowly, so that my wife understand how it's done? We've been arguing over this for 30 minutes, right? And the young lady behind the counter say the correct name and slowly and precisely, concisely, Burger King. <laughs> when we try to prove ourselves what, what's going to happen, we fool ourselves. And God says, do not take revenge. Leave room for me. Where does it say? Romans 12, I think, 12, 19. God can do a better job than we can, right? And I, I had a, such a problem with this uh, Luke chapter um, 6, verses 29, something like that. And you all know, um, the, the love your enemies, and uh, etc. And then if somebody slaps you on your cheek, and what? Turn and give what? The other cheek. Hello, do you want me to be uh, like a drum? Let them beat me up? That's not it, right? God is saying, rise above the situation and be nice to everybody because you are the one I have chosen. You are the one I have given the empowerment. You are the one is equipped to do, to rise above. You humble yourself, and then God will exalt you, right? More than you can be. Amen? That is what second R is rise above any situation. You know, there is a guy who was... Uh, a very um, uh, sound sleeper and took on a train, overnight train, and he needs to get off at the uh, uh, Philadelphia. So he asked favor to a conductor, would you please wake me up? I need to get off at Philadelphia. It, you know, I may be very grouchy and I may even get angry and if uh, you have to drag me out and Please do so because I need to get off uh, at the Philadelphia station. And, but the guy woke up in uh, New York State, right? And he was uh, furious. He called the conductor in uh, Conductor Heaven, right? And the lady sitting next to him and saw he was just a uh, so angry, and she goes, wow, that man just lost it. He's very angry. And the conductor says, you think that's angry? You should have seen the guy we put off in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never know why people get angry at you. Some rejections make us furious, but God says, whatever we lay ourselves down, our pride, our ego, our plans, anything, everything, lay down for God's glory, for the sake of God's world. Then what's going to happen? We are going to be rewarded. How many percent? Do you know? 
How many percent are we going to be rewarded? Huh? Huh? It was in the Matthew. Matthew. Somebody got to find it. Huh? Matthew 19, 29, I believe. Find it. It says, reward is 100 fold. What does that mean? 10,000 percent of interest. Hallelujah. Isn't it worth to rise above? The minute you give in to, the minute you react to, the minute, I mean, I used to tease my sister a lot. Whenever she react to my teasing, she's in my fingertip. The, the principle is this. The minute you react to the rejection or any unkindness, then the one who's doing it to you has what? Control of your life. That is why God says, love your enemy, give another check, don't take revenge, leave revenge to me. Got it? So what will be? Refuse to retaliate. So positive word would be rise above this situation, any situation. And God will give us the strength to do that. Amen? Yes, uh, Sunday morning, uh, the guy didn't want to get up to go to church. So his mom was waking him up and Time to go to church. Mom, I don't want to go to church. No, you got to go to church. And no, I don't want to go to church. People are mean to me. It doesn't matter. People mean to you, don't like you. You got to go to church. No, they all rejected me. I felt alone. No, I don't want to go. I'm going to cook some breakfast for you so that you can cheer up yourself and you got to go to church. No, mom, I don't want to go. Why should I go? And mom had enough, right? Before I kick your butt out of bed, you got to get ready, go to church. I don't want to go. And mom says, crying out loud, you are the pastor. <laughs> you got to go. Rejection from your own people, it's hard to handle. Luckily, sometimes you don't want to get up, go to church. Luckily, I never have felt that way. So praise God. You're all good people. Rejection is very hurtful, painful. And if we hold it in our hearts, hovering all that hurt and pain, it's going to destroy us. Therefore, we've got to know how to handle rejection as our Lord handled the rejection. It's not about you. It's about the other people, right? How do we handle the rejection that we encounter every day of our lives? Hmm? First of all, you've got to what? Remember your call and purpose, and you've got to rise above the situation. Refuse to retaliate. Refuse to make sure that you able to say, I was right, I told you so, right? You let go of that, then God will bless your socks off. 